What is good, everybody? Welcome to an epic My Damn Toys video, guys. Today, we're going to be we're going to be discussing the war that took place last night on Wednesday nights. The new freaking War Wednesdays, guys. I mean, we got to freaking we got to unpack all of this. A ton of stuff to unpack here. AEW versus NXT, both live. NXT obviously on the USA Network. AEW over on TNT with Dynamite. I mean, my God in heaven, guys. We were totally spoiled as wrestling fans last night. Tons of great action. Tons of great things taking place. AEW finally being live on TNT. I mean, this this was a very big deal. You know, we have been hyped up. We had had all the different, you know, the live events, and we've had the pay-per-views that they've had, and it was all ready to be unfolded to us live on TNT last night, and it was so fun. It was fun to watch, and I cannot wait for the weeks to come and see how the storylines progress and things of that nature. And then, obviously, with NXT, you know what you get. It, it's pretty much, you know, they're, they're like, here we are, and they give us a great show. But last night was over-the-top special, and we're going to get into everything, and we're just going to kind of break it down and just tell you guys what happened, what took place, what my thoughts are on everything. I mean, we are just spoiled as wrestling fans, guys. We are totally spoiled. I would love to know down in the comment section below which one you watched. Did you watch both of them? Did you watch one live and then go back and watch? I personally was flipping back and forth, and I went back and watched NXT because I felt like I watched more of AEW. And, I mean, my God, it was, it was just crazy crazy with all of the t things taking place, but AEW, I thought, brought it. You know, it, it felt like, I felt like, I guess we could start off with AEW and we can just kind of break it down and then we'll come back over to NXT and just kind of deliver everything, but AEW, I think, started off strong. I thought the intro was pretty fire. As far as the stage is concerned, I feel like I'm over the stage, you know, at this point. I feel like they've used that stage for so many events in a row now that I'm over that stage. However, it doesn't look like it's going to go anywhere anytime soon, which is unfortunate, but anyways, uh, the, the stage if it were my way of doing things, I think that I would get a brand new stage for Dynamite and then do a unique pay-per-view set for every pay-per-view moving forward. That way, you know, you bring back that element that everybody loves of pro wrestling with the new stages. But it doesn't look like they're going to be changing that anytime soon. Hopefully at Full Gear, which is the next pay-per-view show name for AEW. I, I hate that name, by the way. I don't think it's a good pay-per-view show name, which is unfortunate. You know, I just, I'm, I'm just not big. It's not a t just atrocious. I just don't like it. I, I'm not a fan of it. Hopefully we get a, a, a unique unique stage design for that show though. But anyways, AEW kicks off. AEW champion right here, Chris Jericho is obviously the main guy going forward. And I have mixed feelings about him winning the AEW championship, but I understand it. You know, I can understand it with the mainstream and people knowing who he is, wanting to come back into wrestling. I could see why they would want him as the AEW champion. And you know, I think that one day, Chris, uh, I think Kenny Omega is going to be the one to dethrone him. But um, we had, a, what, a, what a great show that they kicked off with. We had some good stuff. We had the first First ever women's champion, Riho crowned. We had Cody Rhodes in some action back here with Sammy Guevara, and that was that was very interesting. I thought that the show the show started off with no commercial breaks for the first 30 minutes. I think both shows started off that way. I thought it was really nice because I was like sitting there thinking, I was like, my God, I didn't know that until later on in the show. I was like, Jesus Christ, man, like are they ever gonna go to commercial? But I figured out that the first 30 minutes were commercial free, and that was pretty cool. In the main event, guys, we had LAX and Jericho taking on Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks, so it was the Elite taking on Jericho and LAX, and what a nice little main event there, you know, they were bringing out all the stops, and the only thing that I'll say is it just felt more fret, like, were any of the matches just over the top just better than anything I'd ever seen? Obviously not, you know, nothing over the top spectacular, but it just felt like way more inviting, it just felt like a breath of fresh air to have Tony Schiavone, JR, and Excalibur on commentary just felt so nice, I loved it, I'm so glad to see Tony Schiavone back commentating, I loved the main event shot, I loved everything like that, which we're going to get into right now. The Young Bucks, the Elite, obviously taking on Jericho and LAX. And so we had the Young Bucks and Kenny out there going hard. And then out of nowhere, guys, you had knew that it had to take place. Dean Ambrose, John Moxley. I'm going to call him John Moxley from here on out, unless we're referring to him in WWE terms. John Moxley comes out, and he comes out of nowhere from beyond Kenny Omega. Beautiful cinematography right there at the end with the six-man tag team match. Comes out of nowhere, attacks Kenny Omega, beats the hell of him, takes him through the crowd, and he ends up, they go into this like VIP area. There's like a glass coffee table right there. And I, was like, I was joking with Brad. I was watching live with Brad, watching AEW live there. And I was like, he won't put him to the glass coffee table. And by God, John Moxley pulls Kenny Omega over there. And he literally hits him with a paradigm shift slash DDT through the glass coffee table. I was like, oh, hell yes. I freaking love that, man. That is what people have been missing about WWE, that edginess to it. And this show was rated TV 14, which I think is going to resonate with a lot of viewers. I think that people are going to be very excited to see that 
and want to tune in. That is one of the reasons that I'm very excited about AEW is because I miss the edginess in wrestling. So that was a big pop for me. I freaking lost my mind. But that was not all, guys. At, later on in the match, Jericho and LAX would go on to beat the Young Bucks and the Elite in Kenny Omega. So it's another L for Kenny Omega right there. And that the losses are se seemingly building up there. I guess that match was no DQ. They didn't ever call the match, so I don't know what that was. But later on, guys, out comes Jack Swagger. And I popped so damn hard for this. Obviously, it's Jake Hager. That's his real name. He goes by, goes by that in MMA. And he's going to go by that in AEW. And I'm super freaking hyped, guys. I'm a big Jack Swagger fan. I've always liked Jack Swagger. And so you guys know he's in the pick fed and things of that nature. So I was freaking hyped to see Jack Swagger. I even tweeted about it hours before AEW Dynamite went live. I said, I want to see freaking Jack Swagger. And he freaking showed up and I popped hard. Me and Brad were popping hard for the MDT United States Champion. So I'm excited to see where, you know, Jack Swagger slash Jake Hager goes from here. Crowd was chanting, we the people. It was very badassery. Cody Rhodes and Sammy Guevara put on a solid match to open up the show. And it was just a really fun night, man. I can't wait for next week. I I, I will say I, I didn't like the Jay and Silent Bob treatment. I didn't like the celebrity stuff. And I felt like they did a lot of talking and not a lot of storytelling as far as backstage interviews and things of that nature. So I really want to see them interact in the backstage area more. I want to see some segments like that unfold so we can get these stories told. I understand it was the first show, but I do want to see some storyline development. Now we're going to kick it over to NXT, guys, and I think it's pretty obvious what went down here. I mean, this show was packed full, and we're going to get into the markout moment of the week, of the night, of the year, probably. But uh, obviously, our NXT championship match between Adam Cole and Matt Riddle was absolutely incredible. I had to go back and watch it fully, and I was very, very freaking entertained, man. I mean, these are two of the best in the world, uh, two of my favorites in NXT. Not my all-time favorites, but definitely two of my favorites. Adam Cole's up there at the top of Matt Riddle. I love his style. I love how he brings it. I love how he has strong style in his in his blood. You know, he, he brings it hard. That's what I love about certain wrestlers. That's why I love Matt Riddle, and that's why I love Roderick Strong, is those guys freaking bring it. You're going to feel it when they wrestle you, is what I'm saying. So these guys put on a banger. Adam Cole retains. But after the matchup is what I'm talking about, when out of freaking nowhere, my boy Finn Balor's music hits, and out he comes. His hair is slowly growing back from the egghead Finn Balor bald phase that he went through a couple weeks ago when we talked about it here on the channel, but Finn Balor comes out and holy Christ on a bike, guys. I was marking the hell out. I was like, what the hell is going on? I, I, I did not understand what the hell was going on, and Finn Balor comes out there, and he gets on the microphone, gets in Adam Cole's face, and he basically says that Finn Balor is NXT. Finn Balor is now in NXT, and I am going to lose my mind. They want me to tune away from AEW? You put Finjamin Balor back in NXT, which I guess that's the reason why they're putting him back in NXT to compete with AEW is the only thing I would think. They're like, you know what? He's our best champion we've ever had. He, the indie marks love Finn Balor. Let's freaking let's freaking give him Finn Balor full time. And I love this. I think this is a great move. I think that maybe maybe he'll go back up to the main roster in a little while. But for I would love for a year for this man to stay down here, put on great feuds with Adam Cole, Matt Riddle, Velveteen Dream. I don't give a damn. You book Finn Balor, you're gonna get my vote. I'm going to be going over and watching NXT more often. The only thing I will say, this is something I need to add real quick, is it seems that AEW came on back-to-back -back last night. So it was AEW Dynamite and then immediately after Dynamite went off the air, they re-ran it from 9 to 11. I don't know if that's going to be a thing every single week, but that one thing I told Brad is if you keep doing that every single week, people are going to watch NXT live and then at 9 o'clock, they're going to flip over to TNT to watch the rerun of AEW Dynamite and that's not what you want. You want people to watch things live so they can engage with the product. I don't think you want, you know, uh, to, for people to watch NXT and then flip over to Dynamite. I don't, again, I don't know if that's going to be a weekly schedule thing. That's just something I wanted to take note of here. But Finn Balor and NXT, guys, yes, I was marking out. Yes, I'm very excited. And yes, I cannot wait. But that's not the only thing that took place on this show. We also saw an epic tag team championship match between the Undisputed Era and the Street Profits, which was a fire matchup, which I really enjoyed. But this is what I'm talking about right here. Let's go ahead and get this in frame because this is something that I think is on the rumor mill and it looks like they're building towards this which I think is probably going to make me probably crap my trousers. Not only did Finn Balor return to NXT, but Tommaso Ciampa returns to NXT and the pop was epic. It was freaking sweet. I was marking out again and I know my boy TJ from Undisputed Brotherhood is freaking out. Even though he couldn't watch it live, I know that he was freaking out. But can you imagine a Finn Balor versus Adam Cole versus Tommaso Ciampa feud? 
feud. I can't even like fathom the, the epicness that would take place right here. I think I would cream my pants 17 times. Like this is this is beautiful. This is every wrestling fan's dream right here. I am just in love with these feuds going forward. I think the NXT totally brought it this week. They're fully live on USA now. You don't have to flip back to the network to watch the final hour. And I think we're in for some really good entertaining wrestling, guys. I think that this is the start. The last night was the start of an era of just a war. And you could already see the competition breeding. You can already see people, the NXT with their matches announced for next week and AEW with their matches and everything announced for next week. I, I just think this is epic, man. This is just amazing. I feel like we're literally watching we're literally watching a war on Wednesday nights. It's like the Monday Night War all over again, but this time it's way better talent and it's it's in a modern day wrestling time and it's it's freaking crazy, man. I am excited. I am epically just high. I cannot get over myself and it is time to freaking bully, man. I am freaking ready to go and I cannot wait for weeks to come. If you guys would like to watch me maybe review the shows on a week to week basis like this and kind of compare the two. I would love to. I feel like I need more figures, though. I feel like, you know, if we don't have enough of the figures, it's not going to be as good or anything like that. But I would love to know down in the comment section below if you would like to see that. And it's probably going to depend on how this video does and things of that nature. But man, oh man, what a freaking show. Both rosters are freaking stacked, man. And I, I am freaking hyped, man. So let's let's get this thing going. I would love to know down in the comment section below which one you watched. If you watched both of them, let me know which show won. I think NXT won because, I mean, how the hell are you going to top the wrestling that we had. How are you going to top Finn Balor and Ciampa returning? I, I think AEW show was good, and I love the ending there with freaking Dean Ambrose and Jack Swagger and the, and the DDT through the glass table. But I've told you a hundred times, one good moment or two good moments doesn't make an entire show. And while you had one or two moments over here, you had even more moments, I think, over here. Even though the matches were good, it was really tough to decide, guys. I mean, I, I really enjoyed both shows. So, somebody hit me down in the comment section below which one you thought was better. It's a great time to be a wrestling fan. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE AEW figure related content. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.